Hi guys, today we're going to talk about the identity and equality properties from section 1-4 in your textbook. And you already went over these last week, so this is going to be a brief video, just a refresher of these different properties. So here we go. Um, first of all, you have what's called the additive property. And the additive property is just where you take two numbers and add them together and you get the answer that they equal. For example, you could do 7 plus 8. And what does that equal? 15. So as long as that answer equals whatever you're adding on the other side, that's the additive property. Now the multiplicative property is similar. It says that when you multiply two things together, it equals a certain answer. For example, if I do 7 times 8, that equals 56. So 7 times 8 does equal 56, so that's a multiplicative property. And you could also use variables. You could have 5 times x, which would equal 5x. Multiplicative property. Next, we have the property of 0, and this is the multiplicative property of 0. And that means whenever you multiply something by zero, it equals zero. So I could have m times zero, and it equals zero. I could have 127 times zero, and it also equals zero. That is the multiplicative property of zero. Then the last thing in this section on identity properties is reciprocals. Reciprocal is just a fancy word for the flip of a number, and usually when we're talking about fractions. We're either flipping a fraction or we're taking a whole number, putting a one on the bottom, and flipping that into a fraction. So I'll give you a couple examples of that. The reciprocal of one-third equals three over one. All I did was flip that fraction. The reciprocal of a over b equals b over a. I'm just flipping the fraction. And sometimes you might just see a number, like maybe they just say 7 and tell me what the reciprocal is. So when that happens, I always remember that I have that imaginary 1 on the bottom. And I'm, oh, you can't see it because my face is in the way. Hold on. Let's see if I can move it. Hey, now you can see it. Okay. So if they're asking us to find the reciprocal of 7, I need to draw that imaginary 1 on the bottom. Then I can flip it and have the reciprocal. All right? That is the identity properties that you went over last week. So now let's briefly review the equality properties. So the equality properties are a little more tricky. The first one is called reflexive. And the reflexive property just means that one side equals the other side. The sides are the same. So I could have a equals a, or 8 equals 8. As long as whatever's on one side is the same on the other side, that's reflexive. The next one is called the symmetric property. Sorry, my handwriting on here isn't the best. So the symmetric property just says you take what's on one side and you kind of flip it over, but they still equal each other. So I can have 9 equals 6 plus 3, and I could also have 6 plus 3 equals 9. Those two problems are the same, they're just written differently. Another example would be A equals B and B equals A. All right. Sorry, I have a partner at my table who's eating a snack, if you can hear that chewing. All right, the next two, the last two that we're going to go over. One is called the transitive property. 
And transitive is a little bit more complex than most of the other properties, but it's super easy like once you see it and get it. So it says if A equals B and B equals C, then guess what? Hopefully you can already see it. If both of these letters equal B, then they also equal each other. So if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. And we could use numbers or letters and it will still come out the same way. You can even use equations. Um, and then the last property is called the substitution. And that substitution is just what it sounds like. It's when you stick something in as a substitute for something else. So usually we're substituting numbers for letters in math. For example, if they tell you that n equals 5, I just realized my notes are wrong. That's why I paused for a second. Sorry. Teachers make mistakes too. So any, if they say n equals 5, and then they give me this equation, 3 times n. Well, they want me to substitute this information for n so that I can solve this little expression that they gave me. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the 5, and I'm going to plug it right in there for n. So that means now I have 3 times 5. What's 3 times 5? 15. And that's the substitution property. Thanks for listening. I hope you took notes.